big shout out to James Keegan for suggesting this video. Jim Reeves was born at home in Galloway, Texas, a small rural community near Carthage on August 20th, 1923. He was the youngest of eight children born to Mary Adams Reeves and Thomas Middleton Reeves. He was also known as Travis during his childhood years. Winning an athletic scholarship to the University of Texas, he enrolled to study speech and drama, but quit after only six weeks to work in the shipyards in Houston. Soon he resumed baseball playing in the semi-professional leagues before contracting with the St. Louis Cardinals farm team during 1944 as a right-hand pitcher. He played for the minor leagues for three years before severing his sciatic nerve while pitching, which ended his athletic career. Reeves' initial efforts to pursue a baseball career were sporadic, possibly due to his uncertainty as to whether he would be drafted into the military as World War II enveloped the United States. On March 9, 1943, he reported to the Army Induction Center in Tyler, Texas, for his preliminary physical examination. However, he failed the exam, probably due to a heart irregularity, and on 4 August 1943, an official letter declared his 4F draft status. Reeves began to work as a radio announcer and sang live between songs. During the late 1940s, he was contracted with a couple of small Texas-based recording companies, but without success. Reeves at this point was influenced by early country and western swing artists, including Jimmy Rogers and Moon Mulligan, as well as popular singers Bing Crosby, Eddie Arnold, and Frank Sinatra. In the late 1940s, Reeves joined Moon Mulligan's band, and as a solo artist, Reeves recorded Mulligan-style songs, including Each Beat of My Heart and My Heart's Like a Welcome Mat, in the late 1940s and early 1950s. During these years, Reeves took a job as an announcer for KWKH AM in Shreveport, Louisiana, then the home of the popular radio program Louisiana Hayride. According to former Hayride Master of Ceremonies, Frank Page, who had introduced Elvis Presley on the program in 1954, singer Sleepy Labeef was late for a performance, and Reeves was asked to substitute. Other accounts, including that of Reeves himself, in an interview on the RCA Victor album Yours Sincerely, named Hank Williams as the absentee. Jim Reeves was a country music singer who had success early on in his career, first with the song Mexican Joe in 1953 for Abbott Records. Other hits followed, such as I Love You, a duet with Jeannie Wright, and Bimbo, which reached number one on the U.S. country charts in 1954. In addition to those early hits, Reeves recorded many other songs for Faber Records and Abbott Records. In 1954, Abbott Records released a 45 single with Bimbo on the side A, which hit number one and featured Little Joe Hunt of the Arkansas Walk of Fame. Jim Reeves and Little Joe Hunt met at the Louisiana Hayride, which was Louisiana's equivalent to Nashville's Grand Old Opry. After performing at the Hayride in Shreveport, Reeves and Hunt traveled and performed together for several years in the dance halls and clubs of East Texas and rural Arkansas. Reeves became the headliner with Hunt as the backup performer. Due to his growing popularity, Reeves went on to release his first album in November of 1955, Jim Reeves Sings which proved to be one of Abbott Records' few album releases. Reeves' star was on the rise because he had already been signed to a 10-year recording contract with RCA Victor 
by Steve Scholes. Scholes went on to produce some of Reeves' first recordings at RCA Victor. In addition to the Hayride, Jim Reeves joined the Grand Old Opry, also in 1955. Reeves also made his first appearance on ABC TV's Ozark Jubilee in 1955. He was such a hit with fans that he was invited to act as a fill-in host from May through July 1958 on the popular program. From his earliest recordings with RCA Victor, Reeves relied on the loud East Texas style, which was considered standard for country and western performers at the time. But he developed a new style of singing over the course of his career. He said, One of these days I'm going to sing like I want to sing. So he decreased his volume and used the lower registers of his singing voice, with his lips nearly touching the microphone. Amid protests from RCA, but with the endorsement of his producer, Chet Atkins, Reeves used this new style in a 1957 recording, a demonstration song of lost love that had originally been intended for a female voice. It was titled Four Walls, which not only scored number one on the country music charts, but also scored number 11 on the popular music charts. This recording marked his transition from novelty songs to serious country pop music. And according to one source, established Reeves as a country balladeer. Four Walls and He'll Have to Go to find Reeves' style. Reeves was instrumental in creating a new style of country music that used violins and lusher background arrangements that soon became known as the Nashville Sound. This new sound was able to cross genres, which made Reeves even more popular as a recording artist. Reeves became known as a crooner because of his light yet rich baritone voice. Because of his vocal style, he was also considered a talented artist because of his versatility in crossing the music charts. He appealed to audiences that were not necessarily country-western. His catalog of songs, such as Adios Amigo, Welcome to My World and Am I Losing You, demonstrated this appeal. Between 1957 and 1958, Reeves was the host of a radio show on the ABC network. This was also when he began shifting from cowboy outfits to sports jackets. He was given the nickname Gentleman Jim, an apt description of his character both on stage and off. Reeves scored his greatest success with the Joe Allison composition, He'll Have to Go, a success on both the popular and country music charts, which earned him a platinum record. Released during late 1959, it scored number one on Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart on February 8, 1960, which it scored for 14 consecutive weeks. Country music historian Bill Malone noted that while it was in many ways a conventional country song, its arrangement and vocal chorus put this recording in the country pop vein. In addition, Malone praised Reeves' vocal styling, lowered to its natural resonant level, to project the caressing style that became famous, as to why many people refer to him as the singer with the velvet voice. During 1975, RCA Victor producer Chet Atkins told interviewer Wayne Forsyth, Jim wanted to be a tenor, but I wanted him to be a baritone. I was right, of course. After he changed his voice to that smooth, deeper sound, he was immensely popular. Reeves' international popularity during the 60s though at times surpassed his popularity in the United States, helped to give country music a worldwide market for the first time. According to Billboard, Reeves' star shone equally bright overseas in England, India, Germany, and even South Africa. Reeves' last two recording sessions for RCA Victor were held July 2, 1964, 
They produce the songs, Make the World Go Away, Missing You, and Is It Really Over? When the session ended with some time remaining on the schedule, Reeves suggested that he should record one more song. He taped I Can't Stop Loving You and what was to be his final RCA recording. Reeves made one later recording, however, at the little studio in his home. In late July 1964, a few days before his death, Reeves recorded I'm a Hit Again, using just an acoustic guitar as accompaniment. That recording was never officially released by RCA Victor because it was a home recording not owned by the label but appeared during 2003 as part of a collection of previously unissued Reeves songs, released on the Voice Master label. Now, on his personal life, Jim Reeves married Mary White on September 3, 1947. They never had any children, as Jim Reeves was believed to be sterile due to complications from a mumps infection. On July 31, 1964, Reeves and his business partner and manager, Dean Manuel, also the pianist for Reeves' backing group, the Blue Boys, left Batesville, Arkansas, en route to Nashville in a single-engine, Beechcraft, debonair aircraft. The two had secured a deal on some real estate. While flying over Brentwood, Tennessee, they encountered a violent thunderstorm. A subsequent investigation showed that the small plane had become caught in the storm, and Reeves suffered spatial disorientation and crashed. Okay, that's the end of our video. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of video and want us to keep producing them, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching.